We've just seen the preliminary reports behind the Pentagon uh, released to the Senate, the Congress. They're looking at it. I guess this is kind of the slow snowball effect. It, it's going to take a while before it really develops into a momentum where we're looking for. And I think today was an important milestone of what we achieved. You know, something is happening and there's walls being broken in regards to this field there's a lot of drama behind the scenes and it was really refreshing not from what we just heard in regards to these reports that dropped it's really a nothing burger but it seems that we're kind of getting uh, down to the nitty-gritty and if we could accomplish breaking all these walls down in regards to this field because everybody's eating each other alive and we need to stand together so just earlier today, while everything was breaking down, it got a little wild. There was some heated communication between Rich and apparently Jeremy Corbell, who chimed in while there was this live podcast on Ellen Addict's show in regards to this disclosure. And it kind of got a little crazy. And then a lot of people start showing up like Richard Dolan, Stephen Greer, and Jeremy Corbell. And we all get into it. And this is kind of where things get a little crazy. And then in the second half, we jump on with Richard Giordano's live podcast in regards to the aftermath. Did Jeremy Corbell accept the offer? Just check this out. It gets a little wild. Watch. As well, but that's why we're talking the way that we're talking to sort of even that playing field out and give people the other side, if you want to look at it in a polarized sense of, uh, you know, this story at large. So, I mean, I do think that there's something good that will come out of this whole thing, even though it's not, again, what people expected. Yeah. Good Welcome, point. Blake and Brent. What's hey. up, Blake? What's up, guys? Hey, what's up, what's up Brent? I see him back there. Not going, you. Buddy. I see him back there. <laughs> the big day today, right? <laughs> Huge hey, day. The, show's, the big show's right here. Let me tell you, it's, this is more exciting than what we saw in the official report just released. It's cr- Good this show, is the man. most drama I've had since I used to watch Coronation <laughs> Street when I was a, when I was a youngster. <laughs> Pass off the links to Dr. Greer and uh, Corbell. Let's get them all in uh, right now. We'll I, 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 I emailed Corbell. Uh, I passed him the link. Uh, I, I, I don't email, have... I'm going to email Greer and tell him to jump on. See yeah, he's well, he, I, of course he's welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see Dr. Greer in the house uh, talking. Obviously, he's calling uh, Corbell up. Uh, a liar. I think Rich is calling him a liar. Look, you know, Jeremy, the way he just came on the chat and just started poking fun and calling little names, that kind of gives a little bit of his character. You know what I mean? It kind of yeah, everybody knows my is, character. Yeah, I, you know. I don't hide it. What's crazy is that <laughs> over the past few months, everybody's been revealing the, their true colors. And that that's yes. kind of cool. We know where everybody stands in this field. And it's unfortunate that a lot of these people are revealing their true nature and their, you know, their narrative of what they're trying to accomplish. So it's kind of cool. We're, we're able to see behind the curtain now of who's on what side and not. And now it's like, okay, good. Now we know where everybody stands. So I think this is a good position where everybody's in right now. And it's kind of like, we're, we don't have to have any of these guessing games anymore about where people's thought process is. I want to give Rich a like, big thumbs up the way he handled Corbell, the way he jumped on the chat and uh, yeah. This way you handled yourself, I totally respect how you approach it. It's just the only way to do it. He said he was gonna call you back. And he promised yeah. he was gonna call you back. Promised me. Did. I have it on I have proof that he promised. Anyway, he said the same thing to me. He said he'd get back to me. He promised he'd get back to me when we oh. invited him in on to have a discussion with Dr. Greer, along with Nick Pope, Luis Elizondo, and all these <laughs> other guys. And you know, Dr. Greer asked him to come on the third phase moon platform. We did it and we got these responses and Jeremy was real hostile and he said he would uh, get back to me if I emailed him. So I did, you know, it was a private conversation and but uh, it's kind of the same hostile response, which is bizarre, you know, we're just adults here trying to have a communication and have a simple discussion. A lot of people just don't want to show up. Like they rather just like call up people and call them names, cry babies, bullies. 
I don't negotiate terrorists. with, you know, terrorists. Mm -hmm. All this weird language. All it is is just a simple discussion. Let's clear some things up here. Yeah, boys, my, my, my doing that. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. My, my question to you and Brent, do you think these guys are actually in this, like, deep in, into this, as in, they're being paid to say certain things, or do you think that they are just on a different side to what we are in the way that we think about ufology? Like, do you think it's that we possibly could come together and and actually work together and actually bring something forward as a team, or do you think that these guys are? It's you just can't touch the you just can't touch them. If well, that makes asking, sense. Like, well, it kind of does. Like the big question, and what is their agenda? And who's paying, uh, you know, Luis Elizondo? He talks to just about anybody all day long. And, you know, it's just weird. It's like, does he have a job? Or is he just doing this out of passion? Or is he being paid to talk to everybody instead of like big channels like Third Phase of Moon? It's, it's kind of interesting. I see Corbell's here. Cor Corbell, let's just talk a little bit. Clear some things up. Corbell. Why are you just trickling down this information in little breadcrumbs? We that's one of the big pet peeves for all of everybody in this field that we get this in little breadcrumbs. Why not just dump all the files that you got these videos instead of editing them, giving us a little still of fuzzy wuzzy pictures, and then uh, later releasing little clips? Is there somebody telling you you can't release certain parts? Uh, who's in control here, and why this trickle down video? It seems like there is some kind of chess game going on or not even a test game. It seems like there's a script. It's already been written. And these are the tactics for mainstream to get the major media involved and give this threat now where it have been little tidbits. What? I don't know, at third phase moon, we get footage and we put it out as fast as possible. That's our expertise here. And I don't know why you sit on stuff. We don't sit on anything. If we sit on stuff, we'd get uh, piled with too much information. I don't know about you, Jeremy. I just. You know, when you get this stuff, just put it out. Contact Third Phase Moon. We'll share your uh, videos. Um, you know, that's what the whole thing is. We should all come together and work this out on, on the exact same brainwave, not like this fractured community, which it has become mm -hmm. in a way that I've never seen anything like it. I think Lou Elizondo and Tom DeLong and the TTSA single-handedly destroyed the whole community everybody was kind of in this one circle these guys came in and just like you know put a wrench in the wheel and everything just went crazy and there's I, a lot of fractured go ahead i don't mean to put you on the spot blake but can you i want to hear because i always ask you questions and I, I you know just to see if if i'm happy with the way i'm thinking of things Sure. Uh, what was it why has it fractured the community though what did they do so wrong well you know i think we watched unidentified that was a good start that tv series was awful <sighs> forgot about you know, that you know <laughs> it's a constant it threat itself, right? and it really explains itself look at what unidentified was all about that was awful stuff and they were just blaming it on on china and russia Hey, good to see you, Jeremy. I'm glad you're in the chat. Appreciate it. Jeremy, can you I've emailed him. I've emailed him, Brett. I've sent him I've I, I have uh, Brent uh, Blake. Yeah, I've sent him the Who link. Knows? Good. Good. Okay, so he uh, said I can call him now. All right. No, I don't think it was so fractured until Lou Elizondo and uh Tom DeLong and TTSA came into the picture. Even Greer was all associated with everybody that he just called out recently. They used to go to these, you know, contact in the desert. They're doing documentaries together. Everybody, one big happy family, one agenda to get to the truth. But over the past year, since Lou's been out and, you know, the major media is not talking to anybody else except, you know, the major players, he got a little frustrated. And for some reason, they don't even want to communicate with the guy. Greer's statements have been pretty solid over the past 20, 30 years. He, he hasn't changed at all. He hasn't brought up anything new, but for some reason, all of a sudden, you know, Greer disagrees with what's going on in major media, and then they just like jump ship from Greer's boat. Doesn't make any sense. And I think for some reason it got fractured between what how Lou's come out. Let's see, Rich has my number, and so does Rich. How do yes. we know that's Corbell? Is that really uh, him? It's Jeremy. It's Jeremy. There's no. 
There's no doubt about that, yes, Jeremy. Yes, um, I would have said the same thing just so, you know, in case he did watch it. By, anyway. by all means, Rich, send in the link. It'd be great to get him in and just have that conversation, an open conversation with like adults. Rather he needs than a week to prepare. Send, send the link, Rich. Send the link. You never... I, I, Jeremy, I've, all, I've emailed you. I, you emailed me a year ago. I've emailed you back. I did email him, but I emailed him back a year ago, but he never got back to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, by all, all right. I, I think we need to discuss it like adults. I mean, it, yes, I, I, I don't know. What, I don't know what Greer thinks of Jeremy. Whether Jer Greer is on the same level as what he said about Tom DeLong when he was on Security in Ten. He said Tom DeLong. He thought Tom DeLong was being used. I imagine Stephen may say that about Jeremy. I, I, I don't know. As as Stephen said, anything about Jeremy to you guys? Like, well, yeah, you know, we speak with Stephen Greer quite a bit over the past couple of weeks. You know, things are happening, and uh, you know, I'm not going to get into personal uh, things that Greer tells us and his opinions of other people. That's not our that's not our shtick here at Third Phase Moon. We're just kind of you know, we just gather information from the public and we put it out as fast as possible, and we bring in different viewpoints from you know all these talking heads we don't you know we've had jeremy corbell on the show third phase of moon i don't know 10 years ago we promoted his film the bob lazar story we crushed it we crushed it. i think we got like up to a million views on just helping him out with his documentary and then we get him called when he attacks us and starts to yell obscenities about dr greer and everything else it just felt wow. pretty unprofessional on his part when we're just making a phone call you know, we just want to uh, talk, invite Jeremy Corbell on platform, have a discussion like grown men with uh, Dr. Greer. Hey, that invitation is still open, you know, and we've helped Jeremy Corbell out. So when we called them up and I, we told him, hey, it's third phase moon and the response, you know, we're all in this together. We thought his documentary with Bob Lazar, Bob Lazar is an interesting uh, you know, figure in this field. So it wasn't a problem uh, promoting and getting the word out on that. So Jeremy, if you're listening, hey, you know, I don't know. Maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed that day. You got a lot of stress. You're in the news all the time, I guess. I, I don't know what's going on, but people need to chill, chill out, man. It's what's the well, deal? Heard Jeremy was doing some things a decade ago, trying to kind of set. Okay, all right, let's go easy on this. Stuff. All right, all right. Yeah. I, you know, I don't all right. Know. There's some certain details that we don't need to spread out in the public. You know, there's a lot of I stuff going that. on behind yeah. the scenes, and I just, you know, it could get messy. And it doesn't need to get messy. The drama behind all this stuff is a waste of time. You know, mm -hmm. it's, there's other things that we need to worry about. But unfortunately, the drama is just like everybody's tripping over it. And that's what's nobody's keeping their eye on the ball. And that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to get people's information. Let's hear where their heads are at. Let's get this thing on the road. I can say this. I'm disappointed because just yesterday we found out Richard Dolan is done with the, you know, we're going to have this debate. We're going to have this, you know, discussion with Richard Dolan coming up on July 3rd. And unfortunately, there's something that came up. We don't know what came up, but Dolan said the okay. event is off. So God. it's unfortunate. It could have been a meeting of the minds. Something was going to happen. The third phase moon, we're ready. We're always ready. We're prepared. We're ready to talk to anybody. It's no big why, deal. Why are people scared to, mm -hmm. to get on your platform, man, just to talk? I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know, it's man. It's a big following. We got a big I following. Know. They make one mistake. You know, it That's could be true. interesting. It's, you know, on a small channel, they can make mistakes all they want. They come on a big channel, you got a, tens of thousands, 100,000 people <laughs> watching this stuff. They, they can't afford to make any mistakes here. And that's what I think oh. their concern is. And I, I was looking forward to have some. Uh, you know, we're going to have some discussions with Dolan. Who knows what would have happened? Maybe we would have agreed on everything. I'm not exactly sure, but mm -hmm. something or someone, in my opinion, may have got into his head. We don't. Uh, know. I was just about to ask that. Oh, I didn't think. I, I don't know. It. We're speculating. Yeah. All we know is Dolan called it off, and there's some kind of, uh, you know, the dates didn't match up. But hey, he put oh. up a video saying that he was going to come on the show. So I don't know. Something. something Wasn't it happened. his idea though? Yeah, you know, uh, we were approached by uh, Darcy and Dolan to uh, come on this, you know, p this live thing. So it wasn't our idea to reach out to Dolan, but Dolan agreed from uh, 
somebody that was producing behind the scenes to come on the show. So that was kind of cool. Someone reached out to Dolan as Must what Dr. Have. Stephen Greer says. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, that's our, my speculation. Obviously, the debate's not happening. And, you know, we're ready. We're, like I said, we're always ready. Wow. So what is, there? you know, it's very weird. It's weird what's going on here. Can't we just talk, guys, everybody? It's no big deal. Yeah. Wow. Lee, as, as somebody on the kind of outs outskirts, like a fly on the wall of U ufology, mm. What what do you what do you make about the different sides that are going on here? Like, um, it's strange, isn't it? Because it's so it's so fractured. I can understand. Um, I can understand why uh, Cobell wouldn't want to what wouldn't want to come on right now. I get I get why. Um, but it, when you've got uh, when you've got people like that, which are in such con controlled situations, I understand why they don't want to go on third phase because it seems that they have to play a part in this narrative, and I don't think third phase are part of that. You know, it's uh, the uh, the fact that you're such a massive channel as well. You know that that's that makes it equally more dangerous to sort of vary from the path. And like I was saying before, that's ju even just reading the chat here is. When you've got someone like Corbell, which has been such a massive part of this story, and then you've got what re realistically, when you when you look up and down the chat, it's people that are in these boards, which are the bread and butter for what will be his career. These are the people that are watching his documentaries and listening to the podcasts he goes on. But there's a, such a clear distrust of that man, and. I, Maybe maybe a di maybe discourse with with uh, Stephen Gray would would help some some of that and sort of put pay to it, but I I don't think it would do. I don't I don't think this whatever this sort of thing is of like UFOs being classified as UAPs and then um, it's all leading up to this this report. It, it there's a clear plan in place, and I'm fucking confused if I can understand what it is. <laughs> well, I can tell you when we have uh, people invite guests to come out to third phase of the moon, we kind of just give them a call and we say, this is the time. We don't vent them out. We don't tell them these are the questions that we're going to ask. When Elizondo goes on pretty much any podcast, what you're going to see is we hear through the grapevine is you're going to be talking with them for about an hour and a half before the presentation happens or radio show. They're going to mm -hmm. brief them on what they can and cannot ask. And if if you're doing that in this field, that's already kind of a, a red flag in itself. It shouldn't be prep. It should just be a dialogue and any questions should be asked. Yeah. Well, that's the uh, problem. I, if it, I'm sorry, I'm just going to throw this in real quick and I'll yeah. let you go, Lee. That's exactly the problem. If you know there is a narrative being uh, ushered there, and if you want to come on one of our channels, we're looking for the truth. We're not going to ask you those questions where you can sit inside a safe margin and know that this is what's going to be discussed. We're not going to stray outside that box. The whole point in understanding and come back to your original intention, all of you out there who are doing this at large, what is your intention in being involved in this field? Is it for the betterment of humanity at large? Is it for your own personal vindications? Is it somewhere in between? I think some of these guys have to go back to their initial reason for getting into this field and looking at it intellectually the way that we are. Uh, revisit themselves, man, because I think a lot of this division starts with the individuals and the narrative that they're supporting. Again, if you come on uh, one of our shows, you come on Third Phase of Moon, yes, you can have an opposing opinion. That's okay. We're not in grade school where, you know, we're going to get into a fist fight over it. We're going to be adults and we're going to talk about it and we're going to put things on the table and we're going to say, okay, maybe I didn't consider this or maybe you had a different vantage point. Let's have that discussion. I don't see the challenge to run away from that sort of debate. It doesn't have to be something verbally uh, violent in a sense. We can we can agree to disagree if that's what it comes to, but we're still intellectually moving up that ladder. Sorry, Lee, go ahead. It's okay. I can't. I can't what I was going to say now. Anyway, <laughs> I apologize, man. I'm no, sorry. No, I had no, to get that out real quick. Good. The thing is, we all interrupt each other on this subject, and there's a reason why, because it is so out there that we all have different opinions on this, but. It's okay to have opinions, but when there's an agenda involved and people have different ad agendas, that's when it's dangerous. Mm. So I, we can I, all I would like to hope. 
Sorry, on, I'm just gonna, I'd, I'd like to hope that because you were saying before, Doc, that it was, it, it's a, it's an ego thing, and th- that's kind of the best. That that's the best scenario of it because if if J- Jeremy's done uh, excellent as far as you know. Uh, he's, he'd be on Joe Rogan, then that that's given the step to just do all these like major media platforms like CNN and stuff like that. Sorry, um, Lee, I'm just waiting for Joe Rogan to pop in the chat. Yeah, yeah, he's the only one missing. So, uh, <laughs> hey, like, if it, if, Jeremy, if it is an ego, if 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 it is an ego thing where it's just like right, well, I've, I've hit that level now, so I'm not I'm I'm not doing anything that isn't that. I can get that, but I just I I don't believe it's just an ego thing. You know, it's. There would be, it, it would be too good for an ego, wouldn't it, to come on the smaller shows and have all, all the like a proper community sort of lapping up every every word you say. So that that's just why I, I'm slowly not trusting any of it, and that makes me trust Joe Rogan slightly less. I don't like not trusting Joe Rogan. I love Rogan. Charlo, I, well, I, let me just I, say I this: Jeremy Corbell agreed to come on my show later. Well, that's great. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, uh, that, that's boy, my morning. Boy. Yes, that's my morning yes. side. If that's get on there and talk. It is Listen, him, it. Rich. You just click on him. You click on the. Chat. I don't click. All right. If it's him, it's him. I'm not giving him the click. <laughs> if that, if he, if it really, if he really is coming on, then uh, that's 7 p.m. Pacific, his time, 10 mine. It, so I will. Can, uh, can you do me a favor? Rich, I need, I need a, I want yeah. one question. My question that I want you to ask Jeremy, and this is what if it this would be the main question if I had him on my show. What I would ask him is, how does he get his beard to look that good? <laughs> oh, my God, this is a We're not here for pleasantries. We're not here Where for pleasantries is? this time. Maybe we'll get right. there next time, but no, right now it'll we're be getting nice. to the core. It'll, it'll be, be a fun nice. time, but we got we got some work to do here. Look, uh, I, I think it would be a nice conversation. It would be a, a discussion that uh, I am willing to have. And uh, I don't want to be a dick. You know, I don't like it. I don't like being that way. But when somebody says something, you know, stand up to it and do it. So it'll be interesting. And if he does come on tonight, that'll uh, that'll be a that says a lot to me anyway. Not that I it should matter to him anyway. You know, like he doesn't, you know, but I mean, I wouldn't care if somebody liked me or not or hated me, but but it is interesting if he does come on. It is going to be interesting. But so wouldn't that I be wanna... nice? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, well, it would be fine. nice because maybe he would open the door for other people to say, okay, it's okay to step through this door. Maybe that's what's going to come always is. Maybe he'll come I... on third phase of the moon later. I mean, yeah, again. Not know. one guest uh, you know. has ever left my show un- unhappy, ever. Mm. I hey, can what? say this. We you had Jeremy Michael? Corbell. We had Jeremy Corbell we, on we third know. phase of the moon. <laughs> We had Jeremy Corbell on Third Phase Moon 10 years ago, and I think it was one of the least watched episodes on Third Phase Moon ever. So, you know, Jeremy, it's all about your evidence that you're bringing forward. I don't really care about Jeremy Corbell. I just care about, like, how's he getting this evidence? How is he obtaining it? Where's the rest of the footage? And what else do you got? That's about it. That's what's that? And why don't you just drop it all at once? You know, Jeremy whatever he, he makes these documentaries love them or hate them i don't i don't care about any of that stuff it's this footage that he's obtaining how is he obtaining it why isn't it re- being just released all at once these well, are the questions that i have for jeremy i'll, I'll ask him mm-hmm. very good very very appropriate and responsible questions that we need answer from this individual we need yep what else do you got, Jeremy? What else are you uh, holding close to the breast here? You know what I mean? It's like, well, uh, what's the, why, why the trickle down? Why do you show us stills of a video image and then two weeks later release the video image? Why tease us? Is it, is it a strategic move to try and get as many eyeballs on the story as possible? And this is the kind of techniques you got to get through to the major media and you got to play by these little trickle down steps. Well, if that's the case, we'll just admit it, and then maybe we could understand. These are techniques on how we get it, the the big eyes on it, look, and we stretch it out. This is a this is a publication technique in the major media. Well, at least admit it if that's what you're doing. But I'm not sure if that's what's really going on. And it's I don't know. I'm just c- curious on how you receive those videos. We receive videos on a daily basis. It's pretty cool. 
We just did a report out of a, a Shanghai, China with a correspondent out there, Burbex. And, you know, on the ground, we have correspondents everywhere. Everybody's doing on the ground reports that work with the third phase moon panel. And uh, hey, Jeremy, if you want to, you know, participate in something bigger than all of us, uh, maybe maybe you can share some evidence and we'll put it out there. That's what our platform's for, is to get it out as fast as possible. It's real simple. But, but isn't George Knapp, doesn't he have a contact at the Pentagon that's getting these videos and evidence for Corbell? Yeah, I heard that. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Let's find out. And that's uh, okay. I mean, a specific answer for that. Right. That's a great question as well. How's is George Knapp the middleman between the Pentagon and why are they uh, giving it to a journalist? A journalist that's some kind of a you know news anchor in Las Vegas. Why why give it to even George Knapp? What yeah. Made him, yeah. You know what makes him the go to guy? Is there a reason? I guess he's been in it for a while, but I don't think he shared as much evidence from the public as much as we have at third phase of the moon. I think what we put out he, like his every name has been there, hasn't it? He's got his archive beat. His, his name has been there for such a long time though, isn't it? You know, it's um, people that aren't like totally into the subject know who George Knapp is. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, he, and I guess he can keep his mouth, you know, shut. He doesn't talk about his sources. So, you know, he got some sort of trust maybe with them that way. Could it be coming in from Bigelow, for all we know? With and uh, but we'll somebody... never know. Well, well I think there's definitely a there's definitely a link there, Blake, with Bigelow. Definitely, one hundred percent. I think so. There's something going on. You know, we're we're pretty much we know. I think what's going on within the circle involved with the major media. There's a lot of uh, leaks coming out from on that side. I guess people want us to know the information of what's really going on behind the scenes in regards to this narrative that's uh, being put forth on the major media. And again, we're not going to get into the details on that. I, I think that just muddies the waters. But we're kind of like, we realize there's something going on. And, uh, you know, it's controlled. People are in charge. And uh, again, it's it seems it's like there's a big script going on. It's already written. And uh, man, what about this nine page report? Anybody get to read any of that? We just went over it real quick. That's all or, we did. We skimmed through it. Yeah, yeah. Not much going on over there, is there? Isn't it? It's just the uh, press releases and stuff like that. That's it. Uh, 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 from 2005 till present, uh, press releases of who, you know, is, you know, director of this or who's been fired. And it's nothing. Re I didn't see anything that said UAP in it. You know, we talked to Michael Schratt last night and uh, he knows pretty much for a fact we have these videos in clear, broad daylight, close black and white glossies. Black and white glossies and and why don't they, We're not they're just not going to give it up. They're they not going to give it up. That's why it's up to us to get it out there. It's up to us. It's some, you know, if they're extraterrestrial in nature, they didn't make an agreement with anybody. They could mm -hmm. reveal themselves anytime they want. As far me, as this, what's that? I was going to say, let me throw this question out there. If we're not seeing it from the government, we don't see it from the public either. So maybe there isn't anything to show us. Is that possible? Hey, it is possible. Maybe this Tic Tac well, doesn't um, even exist, right, Brett? Yeah, we kind of talked about that. The government doesn't investigate faith or religion. And this is kind of... You want to get in closer? It's hard to hear, yeah. Yeah, come on. Can you both get next to each other? It'd be nice to have you both on at the same time. Well, it's kind of been like the military doesn't investigate faith-based religion. It, that's pretty much off the top, off the topic. You're not, you're not going to see declassified papers of what happened with Jesus 2,000 years ago. Now, when we're talking about UFOs, people do think it could be like a faith-based religion where you're believing in this aspect of the unknown is that we're not alone and it still hasn't been proven yet but now the government's researching it and they've been doing it for who knows how long 70 years so there's something to it which makes it more tangible than a uh, faith-based religion so it's pretty cool that it delved that deep into it but the biggest thing about countdown to disclosure and what happened today is probably that they named it 180 days to countdown to disclosure just helping the documentary that we put out has more information than what just dropped today in a, on this nine page report. It's pretty sad. 
absolutely. Do you think there's going to be something to follow this, though? Because, like we said at the beginning of the show, this is kind of like the pre-report. Is something going to drop in the next couple of hours? Well, Jeremy says he has more videos. Uh, if Jeremy's still in the chat, when's that going to drop? Let's ask that question. He's still in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very let's, good question. Uh, let's see it. Yeah, we're all waiting. Yeah, but he we're can't tell. Can he tell well, us or? Why couldn't he tell us when he would put it out? Give us a you know, day. Unless Give it, us it, time. We'll all be there. Unless it yeah, interfered that... with his agenda. You know? Again, it comes back to, I don't understand why these things can't be put out the moment. That, listen, it, it's as simple as this. And yes, this is sort of left field, but it does make sense if you look at it in certain ways here. There's a universal law that sort of says, hey, listen, if you come into information that is a, will positively affect people at large, it's your responsibility to disseminate this information uh, you know, not looking for anything coming back to you. It, of course, energetically, things do come back to you, but you, you, you know, you can't withhold stuff for a, a personal agenda or monetary gain or anything like this. I mean, again, I'm, I'm kind of beating a dead horse and saying this, but I, I apparently feel like I have to keep reiterating this particular concept that this is for the masses. This is for all of us. You see something in the sky, you don't own it. You might've filmed it, you, you own the footage, but you don't own the event that's happening here. So yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Well, the government does it that way. Yes, they do. They certainly do. Actually, we it's don't, being, I, I personally, yeah. Would we yeah, trust, that, the thing, the thing is know. now though, would we tr actually trust any footage? No. Any footage, no matter how good it was, no matter how clear it was, no matter how much you, you looked at it and thought that can't be fate, would we 100% trust it i honestly don't depends think on, we would. it depends on how good it looks i think we could depends all on the make source. an assessment yep if no i think that's too good to be true which we always see all the time and then obviously mm -hmm. it's 100 percent cgi but if it's coming in from the government you could tell if it's cgi if it's done correctly with the camera movements so just the way it moves uh, special mm -hmm. effects can't reproduce this uh, we'll be convinced. We just need that smoking gun video or give us some evidence of some medals or whatever you guys got. Brent, yeah, I would I agree mind. with you there. Uh, one, one second, Dark. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you there. But when you look at things like now, like deep fake, when people are actually being, being able you to can still tell. Fake, you can, you can yes. Tell. Give it five years. Yeah, give, give it some military funding as well, right? So, so yeah. So when it yeah. comes to the military, um, if there is people, to, I always hear people talking about uh, Project Blue Beam or the fake alien invasion. And you mentioned last night about that's already happened, Rich, mm -hmm. or it's already happened. Okay, what if there's that kind of there's that CGI technology that is being withheld? that they can make something look that good on a some clear footage or whatever they, that they can release something and we we the general public will look at it and go that's the one that's the smoking gun but that in reality is just something that's been made we as far as we know uh, and, and and you guys uh, you've been in the you know what you're doing with cameras this that and the other and you know how to spot a fake. We all kind of know how to spot a fake when we see it on YouTube. But do we know how to spot a government uh, like bigger than the government fake? You know, that kind of fake, that that technology that, it, that we just don't see as general public. I don't think we, you would because I, 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 I would put money on it that you've already seen fakes on the news and when uh, leaders have been put in certain places where they didn't Carefully. want to go or couldn't go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where they didn't want to go or couldn't go. I guarantee you've watched stuff on the news that you've thought was there and isn't there. So I, I think that's it's, it's already possible to fool, fool people in that way. I've said all along that from the, the, if, if there was any sort of government disclosure, everything would turn its head and we would be doing these live streams talking about how we don't believe the UFO footage 
and every uh, every mainstream guy out, out there that's like doing a normal job that's usually watching like Dancing with the Stars on a Saturday night, they would be believing aliens are coming to get them, and the whole thing would switch on its head, and the conspiracy theorists would be the guys that didn't believe it anymore. And this is what's happening, Lee. <laughs> the, the, the conspiracy guys, you know, the guys that have been doing this. It's it's truth seeking, isn't it? They're like it's it's questioning things, and that's what anyone that's interested in any of these any of these type of subjects. That's all we do is question things. So when something comes along, it's going to promise you the world. You're going to question it. If this had have happened five years ago, I'd have probably been be, like trying to teach my parents about ufology and trying to even though i'm not a ufologist myself i always say that but i would be trying to say that look something's going to hit so then it's going to be big you need to be aware of it you know but mm. i'm not even bothered because i don't i don't trust any of it if this I've had lost happened five years faith. ago yeah I, i'd have been rolling my sleeves up and slamming it directly into my veins if it had happened five years ago do you have faith in this, Brent? Do you, do you have do you, do you think that we're ever going to see anything, or do you think it's just going to be the public that'll bring it? Oh, I think we're going to find out in our lifetime that we've been visited. Let's just hope. Come on, that's what we're mm -hmm. here on this planet for. Um, I have faith that what we're receiving at third phase of moon and how powerful it is with the information coming in all the time that. We've got things on our channel that nobody could explain what the technology behind it is, the meta propulsion. Is it going to be something that we're going to be able to pick up tangibly where we're going to be able to get into vehicles such as this uh, kind of tic tac? Uh, we'll see, but I do think it probably will be trickled down. And I think they are reverse engineering alien tech and we're going to be seeing it in our lifetime, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I do have a confidence that, um, we're going to get an answer one way or another in our lifetime. Hopefully uh, in the next, it's not going to happen today. That's for sure. And that's a big uh, letdown. But Look would you guys trust it? Would you guys trust it if it came from up high? If it came out and if we saw a video that pretty much can't explain what we're looking at, if let's just say if the government has its own Hollywood tech company inside its own military service and they have this software that they could create CGI better than Hollywood can, then uh, maybe it could convince us and we could get tricked on it. But we haven't seen that come out from the government yet where there's this kind of high tech movie cinema technology that's better than what we're seeing in Hollywood. I think Hollywood's pretty much at their top of their game. And if I don't think our government will be able to replicate that and convince us that this was actual real video, but instead it was some, something that they created, I don't think so. But that's a possibility. They could be making their own movies in-house in the military with technology that uh, could leave Hollywood a uh, hundred year, hundred years in the past of what what's going on. One of the smoking guns for me is is the the children, the South African children. You've seen that that uh, that they were in. I mean, uh, it's been out for years, and you've seen that that uh, in the phenomena. I can't say that word, but yep. they were featured in that. Um, that to me is one of the folk uh, smoking guns because children do do not lie. They do when they want sweets uh, or they want a lollipop or whatever, you know, and they said, say, no, I've not had a lollipop today. And I, well, you have because your mum just told me I had. But children, those children, when they when they were talking about that, they didn't, you know, they, they looked like they were just telling they were just telling what they did at school. They you know, experienced they, something. That's it was, sure. it, yeah, and, and still to this day, when you look at them now growing up, that to me, that's a smoking gun. That really is. Because you I look wish at, they had a camcorder over there and was filming yeah. it. I think we mm. would have saw something that would have kind of maybe uh, answered this question a long time ago. Somebody had a good camera, started snapping some pictures. That's unfortunate. There's a lot of these great cases with people and testimony that you truly believe it. They just had a camera that day. We're talking to somebody again, where they're just, uh, they had the Oz factor. They're seeing this large craft go over Nevada. And he says he did have a camera on him. And if he got it, he, he would have had the smoking gun. But we hear that story all, all the time. Unfortunately, we're not having that crystal clear proof that just, just it's definitive. This is it. They're here. Why do you and, think- uh, we are 
Go ahead. Oh, what the hell is that noise? <laughs> what is that? It's one of these. You got one? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Say hello. Oh, yeah. Awesome. She's a cutie. She's, she's oh, so. snorts. She's like, a, a, she's like a motorcycle going by, really. <laughs> Also, we're not eating today or something, you know. <laughs> well, it's going. for stomach, yeah. oh, I can't believe you know, we're trying to tempt Jeremy Corbell on with puppies now. Have we, well, have we got that <laughs> far? Did Somehow. Jeremy ever answer uh, that question in the chat when he's going to be dropping the video? I didn't see. I can't read the he, chat. He, put, he said he was checking. He said he was checking about 10 minutes ago. Oh, cool. Cool. Hey, yeah, all right. This is good. This is a, even though it's not a direct conversation we're getting some communication here sometimes that's all it takes you know it's kind of funny i think about it this way we're really in the most archaic of times when it comes to this field uh by and large 30 40 50 years from now we might be talking about ufo sightings as something passe in the respect that it's now a natural thing that you tell your children about they tell their children about you know it's as, as natural as the sun in the sky Maybe we don't still have answers at that point where they come from or whether we're involved technologically, but this is where it's going. It's progressive. So if everyone's along for the ride, which of course they're integral to this process, eventually we're gonna either have to know what they know or we're going to be dropped on a lower tier wherein it'd be very recognizable the role that we might play at that point, whether it be uh, some sort of emotional, mental manipulation, physical manipulation, the way of slavery, that these lines are moving apart and uh, eventually we're either going to have to gravitate towards one end of the spectrum or the other because it's dividing the duality is sitting very very steadily in between those two outcomes but those are really the two outcomes that we could look at by and large we join those who have this information and know what's going on into this new paradigm shift or we're left behind perhaps intentionally no, it's, it's kind of refreshing. It's good that even, you know, there was some passion going on in this, uh, you know, discussion tonight. You know, we might have, have been able to break some walls down, it sounds like. You know, Jeremy's already agreed to come on Goofon's show. That's great. He's uh, notifying us that there's some videos that he's looking over it right now. So there's a communication that has happened within the past hour and a half. As of right now, we're in we're we're going into the future possibly here of breaking down these walls and barriers that have been built up because we're all kind of disappointed what's coming out obviously in today's report. There's nothing there. So now it all falls upon back to us again, which we all knew was gonna happen. So, you know, that's cool. Jeremy's is good. We gotta all communicate our evidence, our, our information and try and get it out as fast as possible and not sit on this and try and wring it out. Uh, you know, we're moving fast and uh, we got to keep moving in the right direction and just pound that information out to the public. Let's not sit on this stuff. Let's let's work together. We got something. Let's all get together and put it out there as fast as possible on all platforms. That This is how it needs to be done. Instead of fractured platforms, we need like just a platform a bunch of platforms in one direction instead of a bunch of fractured platforms that's inoperable. But Blake, even if we get them, everybody thinking, you know, do you actually think that we can make a difference? 100%, obviously. You know, if we didn't put out Countdown to Disclosure, if Dr. Greer didn't drop what he said about a month and a half ago, if we haven't been talking about this on our platform, on Goofon's platform in regards to you know, this other agenda that's been kind of been put forth on the major media. If we have, if we didn't bring any of this stuff up, everybody would have been hoodwinked. Everybody would have fell for, there would have been no opposition voice, except the opposition voice that we put forward to millions of people over the past few months and hundreds of thousands of people who's watched Countdown to Disclosure so if we didn't put this out, everybody, like I said, would have fell for it. There was no really opposing side. Everybody is going for the Lou Elizondo narrative, the Nick Pope narrative, whatever Jeremy's narrative is. Maybe we could figure this out here in the next day or so. So this is, this, it's good. But like I said, 
it can make a big difference if we keep putting out this information, especially as a collaborative of power. You know, imagine all these voices in one narrative. We got Greer, you got Jeremy Corbell, you got Dolan, you got Lou all on the same page. Instead of this in-house fighting, who cares about all this drama? What's the real, what are we really trying to do here? Intention, exactly. Very well said, what, Blake. I'll tell you what we was trying to do. We were trying to figure out what had dropped. But we've just gone out on the tangent, but it's been more fun than the drop because there has been no drop. As far as I know, I did say to people in the chat, I said, everybody spam, it, spam, it's dropped, if anything actually does drop. But it looks like we are, Rich was right, and we are only going to get the, uh, the, the primim, prim, preliminary, preliminary, thank you, report. Ollie, the, uh, the, the, the abbreviation is prelim, just go prelim. Prelim report, yeah. Prelim. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Hey, did it like two months ago, the CIA dropped everything they had on UFOs? And the, yes. the, the report was this thick. And there's just a yep. plethora of information in there. There's a lot more in those reports than what we got today, a, a thousand percent more. And nobody really cares, it seems to me as well. Nobody cares about these reports, these redacted documents. That's the frustration. Give us the clear evidence. Let's get the old, you know, print the polaroid or whatever black and white photos we could date it from 1947 we could do tests on these photos to prove that they're authentic crystal clear footage of these things no manipulation of cgi no hollywood effects give it to us they got it they've been filming these things for for decades now and they're not they're going to give us nine pages that's terrible well, it's, it's nine pages, but there's a lot of uh, subtopics in there and different things. So it's a lot. It's not a little. There's a lot of stuff in there, actually. In the nine pages, or is there nine extra? pages? But in each page, there's many different things you could look at, different uh, subjects. And is there in, anything that's that's tickling you, Rich? Is there anything in no, there? I haven't had time. I haven't had time. No photographs or videos no. attached to this? There's no. So. It's yeah, all, I haven't seen any evidence either I, like that. Nothing. We would have got it yeah. already. It's just a timeline of press releases. Something. That's all. It's just a timeline. Wow. Just realized I'm chewing a cockroach. Um, yeah. <laughs> if anything is going to drop, surely it's going to drop in the next couple of hours. But it but from what that says, it is just going to be more of the same old shit that we've got. And they're just going to re reiterate. We're not done what? yet, though. You're right. It could happen by the end of the day. We still might get, get something. That's why we're talking. People are listening. Look, we had Dr. Greer's on your show, Ellie Natick. You got Jeremy Corbell chiming in. Even uh, the disclosure guy was it the Jesus dude or whatever. Jesus, He's Jesus. in the house. I, I, I sent him an invite on Twitter, yeah. and that's you know it's interesting. He's defending you, Rich. Jesus, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus had your back, mate. He Jesus had your back. Yeah. So good for you, disclosure, disclosure guy hey. or whatever. Post hey, Rich. Hey, Rich. You've, you, you've got a friend in Jesus. <laughs> it's about time man i'm a believer he's still he's, he's still watching i can you tell know, he's he's come a long way though man he has he's, he really really has he's doing a pretty good job now you know because in my opinion listening. what who am i but, yeah yeah it takes a while it like, does it, it, it's hard to transition somebody's mind in this thought process and look at the bigger picture because there's just so you know, they came in with their own opinions and kind of green in, in the situation as well, not really knowing the bigger picture. But then once you start getting into it, just like just like ourselves, we we've had a different paradigm shift of the way we thought this 10 years ago, the bigger picture. And it's easy to see. Through, and it's just the information that keeps coming in from behind the scenes with all these major players. Then you start realizing. Well, you, you just realize that this is crazy above top secret stuff 
and they're not gonna they're gonna hold it they're not and they've done their job to keep it keep it hidden from <laughs> us and uh, that battle's lost Why? hey that's funny yeah uh, that's funny post disclosure world <laughs> what uh, what i miss don't let says, dark sky files don't let them know i think they are okay <laughs> <laughs> hey whatever it, man. did he ever like find break did he down find walls dog? man breaking down those walls these are That's people this is this is what could happen and I, I we're seeing it right now in front of our eyes right right now and uh that's pretty cool man you, you just we could all get together and rock this planet real fast if everybody just got together we come up with some ideas and we hey, could rip things out so in. fast who's in oh, who's yeah. it dropped in the chat who richard Richard, hey, oh, Richard. Oh, Richard Dolan, yes. There we go. We're going to have everybody on board tonight. Where? Oh, brother. See what I say? The walls are breaking down. Richard, good to see you over here in the Alien Attic shot. I guess I'm going to give you a win that your name came up, and it did. And We had to let everybody know our debate's off. Unfortunately, maybe we could do it another time. Um, not sure what the reason was. I guess he had a conflict of timing, schedule, or whatever. But hey, maybe we could do it another time and uh, we'll see. There's a lot of uh, things to discuss and there's a lot of walls that need to be broken down. There's a lot of evidence that people are sitting on uh, that could be put forward to everybody in the field to have chime in on this stuff. We're getting information on a daily basis. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of you know drama behind the scenes, which is unnecessary. So, you know, good to see Richard in the house. If why is it, why do you think it's unnecessary? Sometimes things have to be said. Sure, but I think there's confusion. That's the thing. You, oh, yeah. You, well, that's people true. Are just like, we, we can't read each other's minds. We're not telepathic. So we, we, we just might not understand each other. And once you have a dialogue, mm -hmm. it, it could get squashed like that, right? Yeah, Everybody yeah. Knows. We've seen it. I've seen it with you well, over the last two years with every, a lot of people. We've Look, squashed Ellie things and, and you know, Ellie and Attic, Goofon, you guys were attacking third phase of moon for for years. But you guys now that you've seen what's going on, all the evidence, how it's just on a daily basis of how this information comes in, now everybody's kind of part of this stuff. But hey, we reached out to we reach out to our critics and want to explain our side of our thought process. And once that's done, then you're able to uh, squash a lot of myths about what you believe about that person and i was hoping we could do this with uh, the richard dolan event but uh we'll we'll see what happens in the future um about possibly doing it in maybe in a bigger fashion he'll be back absolutely i don't mean to uh i don't mean to jump in here but uh guys i do have to run i'm on grant cameron's show at uh seven o'clock so i'm gonna go and prepare for that very quickly but ollie prepare, he's been an this has been one hell of an epic show. Hey, and you know, what Blake is talking about, <laughs> what Lee's speaking on, what Rich is mentioning, we're breaking down walls right here, right now, tonight on the show. Maybe we were all waiting for something in the way to be given to us. Maybe what we just did here is going to be sort of disclosure. I just gave That's you it, disclosure, hey. people. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful man. Could, could go down in history, could go down in history, but thank you for everybody. Uh, you know, whole panel here you guys have been awesome and thank you for uh everybody who came into the chat uh, of course dr stephen greer great to see you man jerry Marie, uh, jeremy corbell good job man stepping up saying that you're going to make this communication come on goof on later we will be all watching and entertaining that believe me and of course richard dolan thank you for popping in and god help me if i've missed anybody there have been so many coming through but i have to run so thank you very much guys i appreciate it michael you are the most beautiful man in ufology and that's coming from a man who's a married man <laughs> i appreciate you well thank you very much man i appreciate you bro i very much do i'll be watching <laughs> take, take care brother take, take care. care thank you very much guys talk to you later yep Peace. ciao so there you go Stephen, awesome. Dr. Greer, and uh jeremy this room we've, we've made room dark house kindly moved over so one of you can join in <laughs> so and that's wishful thinking um he's a he's such an odd one that Who? people this this tonight it's 
It's I'll be honest with you, a little bit overwhelmed. But at the same time, I'm also asking myself, why? Why is everybody chiming in? Who? And my question is, they're all watching. Probably Ollie. to sure. you, to 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 Rich, and to you, to, to you, Blake, that have been in this field for quite a long time. Out of everybody, out of out of, do you think any of them actually know the answers? No. Oh uh, well, I, you know, I think Dr. Greer's been embedded for a long time in this, and you know, I asked him if he's seen the spaceship up close. Has he been right next to this meta propulsion craft? He said he hasn't. So in reality, he hasn't seen it either. Hmm. He's getting briefed on apparently what's going on behind the scenes but in actuality nobody knows more than the other guy because we don't have above top secret clearance um but i do believe that you know the reason why what happened today and this phenomenon of everybody jumping in on this show tonight on alien addict show is just due to the fact that everybody's aware of this little circle of ours that we've been talking we're the different we're the different voice of what you hear in the major media and everybody wants to hear, everybody watches third phase. They don't admit it, but they're closely watching because that's where the that's where the news, that's where the evidence is coming out as fast, faster than anywhere else on the planet. And obviously we've been dealing with these guys over the past few months in a small circle. And again, it is, this community is so small, but there's so much fracture going on that we've seen. It's just, uh, it's, it's kind of sad to see because we kind of stay out of it. We're here in Hawaii. We're just doing our own thing. We don't, we're not into these conventions or whatever. We rarely come on these kind of platforms that we're doing right now. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's sad to see and how um, fractured it's become over the past three months where it could absolutely go the other way, just like that. Just like how we're seeing right now. We're making history right now. And people wanted to uh, find out what was going to happen with this dump today on, in regards to this disclosure, the pages. Nobody has anywhere to go. Nobody has any answers. So they're going to come back straight where, where the information's at, the public and opposing views. We put out our information and we invite our panel members to look at this and come up with their own mind of what's going on. And we invite everybody else to join in regards to this kind of a, you know, progressive exploration, investigation. Uh, speculation, whatever it is, what, you know, this is all we got. This is the only path we got and we're going to take it. And I'm sure that uh, everybody's kind of like rethinking about the big picture today. Do you, do you and Brent ever just kind of like sit down together, having a, having dinner and just say, you, you know what? I just don't think, I, I think Rich is right. It's never going to happen. Um, no, I, I, I think there's you some do kind think, of You do I think, think we're going to get a disclosure? Yeah, either way, we're going to find out something within our lifetime. I think it's destiny. Uh, I don't know. It's just, the, it's in my opinion, that's how I have an outlook on the future. But we don't know. Rich could be right. But I got a feeling we're going to find out about some kind of ancient civilization with advanced technology that once existed here. Something along these lines. Or we're going to get this meta propulsion craft that seems otherworldly and we're going to be able to utilize it or it's going to be used uh, hostile against us. It's all, it's just like, hey, look, man, we're living in the future right now. <laughs> I thought that was Tyler then. I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> I, should, I should send him an invite, actually. No, I, I, know, what you, I know what you're saying, boys. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it, it could happen. It could but I, I, I'm kind of like, I'm in Rich's uh, side here where our, our I'm thinking. Our documentary, when it comes out, the sequel to Countdown to Disclosure, the objective of that documentary is to make people mad, mad as hell, and make them rise to the, make them rise to demand more answers. It's a frustrating, frustrating uh, situation that we're all in, but we're, we're going to be revealing a lot of things that's been happening behind the scenes, the major media, what they've been up to and uh, information that hasn't been seen or heard for over 30 years and uh, perspectives on things that a lot of people aren't aware of. So once you kind of come out and make these statements, it creates a movement and we expect Countdown to Disclosure to get a lot of people pissed off out there. 
pissed off at the you know the suppression of the information. It's fascinating. You know, I think major media though damages this subject more than anything. The major media damages it. Yeah, more yeah. Than the anything. major the major media, like in terms of this that's going on right now. The, the, I mean, I feel right now there is a damage control going on in the chat. It's insane. This is all. This is all damage con control. This is why people have come on the show to damage control. Hey, we're not changing our narrative. We're we're staying the same. But people are understanding we're on the forefront, the spearhead of all of this. So if they want to come along for the ride, you know, these walls have to be broken down. And I think that's what's going on today. Looks like uh, Jeremy says he's going to email you, Rich. So I think he's going to go on your show tonight. Yep. He already said he was. Good. Yeah. I already got the show set up. Perfect. He's already so made the thumbnail. We'll see if he has the time. He might be busy today. I think he might schedule no, he, something. No, he just said he'll, he's coming on tonight. I asked I earlier. Heard. I said, "Are you? Does your yes mean that you're coming on the show tonight?" And he said, "Yes." Awesome. Looking forward to that. So if it changes, it changes. I mean, it may, you know, it is spur of the moment. I get it. So, but if he doesn't come on, we'll talk. We'll we'll talk yep. about what happened. That's it. No, no, That's I don't want to. You know, go after him. I'm not up for doing that. I mean, I already said what I had to say, and he's going to come on, and we're going to talk about it. Maybe not tonight. If it's not tonight, maybe another night. But I hope it's sooner than later. That's for sure. It should be today. Just get it over with. Squash this, Jeremy. And, uh, you know, let's move along. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have been said behind the scenes. I've said a lot of things in front of the scenes. And, you know, I'd like to explain some of those things. Oh, yeah. 100%. Sorry to mean to cut you off. But, well, uh, yeah, it's just that, you know, there's things that we've been hearing with all these players that have kind of like wanted to derail third phase of moon for a long time. And, mm. uh, you know, this information has become privy to us and, you know, it's just, there's things that, you know, we could squash. I could, we, you know, we don't have to attach onto these things that happened in the past. We're in the future now. So let's move That's, along. guys. This, let's this, move this, along. Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm open to that guys. Yep. Team together. Everybody achieves more. I would there love it if we could all, talk together anytime we want that would be freaking exactly. awesome that's the whole point that's you know forget the egos guys let's drop the egos i'll drop mine yeah everybody and then let's just rock and roll man let's all bounce off off the information we're receiving in liquid time and give the world what they deserve uh you know collaboration of minds and, and i think i'm excited i, am. I think i'm a little excited for once i think i weed myself a little bit you know, a little bit. <laughs> high five, high five, high fives, everybody. <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> hey, oh, I, well, lo I, I love Americans. Hell yeah. <laughs> Why? Why would you say that now? And Lee, what do I call you? An, an Isle of Manian? Of oh, Manx. Manx. There you go. Yeah. Because uh, 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 me and Lee actually are not in the same. Lee, are we clusters? Are we? Cl we're not in the same country, no. Even no, though we no. we look and sound the same, <laughs> we're not in the same country. Hey, and we're gonna have to get going. We gotta get on some news today, but it, it was fun chiming in. Appreciate us. Uh, yeah, the, us the show's always. coming to an end anyway thanks now, mate. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you for coming on, boys. Hey, yeah, thanks everybody thanks. in the chat. Good to see Dr. Greer. If you're still here. Appreciate you. We I know we spoke recently. We said, hey, you need to participate in these chats a little bit more. People are talking about you. And it's it's nice to see Greer uh, approach yep. people. And this is a, a great, this is refreshing. So and it cool. seems like Jeremy Corbell, there's a little defense and uh, you know, offense going on here. But hey, look, this is this this could happen. We could get get things done. And then Richard Dolan came in. Good to see Richard. Yeah. Fortunately, we could make that thing happen, but hey do it some other time so now it's interesting can we accomplish uh, this whole defense mechanism of people trying to eat each other alive in this field and trying to get it into a dialogue a discussion so we could get all on the same platform and bulldoze through this disclosure if we're all infighting it's it's not going to work so what happened next did corbell show up 
to Richard's show on Goofon. Well, apparently things didn't go the way we thought it was. We had an open invitation. Jeremy seemed like he was going to come on Goofon's show. And he did not show. And this is kind of the aftermath. Check this out. This is kind of cool stuff. Alien Scientist joins in Jeremy with really cool behind the scenes information in regards to the history and his thoughts on this whole aspect of disclosure. Why is Jeremy Corbell getting on, you know, getting all the attention and limelight for, for what does he put out, but except, you know, a bunch of false promises and lies. It's, 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 I, I can't, you're one of the only channels on here that are actually calling him out, man. And, and I'm, I'm really, I must, I, I got to commend you for that. I wanted to jump on and just thank you for the awesome job you guys are doing and throwing a couple pieces, throwing a couple jabs myself because he's a mosquito yeah. and he, he's a, he's a plague or a cancer on this movement. He's all ego and he's 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 destroying this like i don't know i, I feel like he's a plant i i really do i feel like oh. he he was picked and put out there on purpose to to mislead everybody to show all this these fake ufo videos none of it's the real stuff not, not we've been researching cases you know we know that the government's been covering up all kinds of stuff with relation to this topic for decades and decades and decades it does doesn't go just back to a tip it doesn't just go back to these programs they go way deeper than that and uh this nine page you know government report i i already said this was going to be a nothing burger we're never going to get anything yeah. out of the government um and that's 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 why we're we're you know Jumping so where on. does Nap, where does Nap fall into his third phase is here in the in the green room? Uh, but one thing I wanted to ask you, Jeremy, where does Nap come into play with Corbell? See, like I think you know, I'm just gonna pick a guy in the media, you know, anyone that could be in control. I really like Nap is is because he Jeremy Corbell always calls Nap his mentor. You know, he's like my mentor, George yeah. Nap, my mentor, George mm -hmm. Nap. You know. We, Honestly, Corbell wouldn't be getting any of these leaked videos. He's obviously getting them from George Knapp, right? That's yeah. his source, right? So George Knapp gets all these videos, and he can use his little puppy dog puppet, Corbell, to go and put all this stuff out so that later on when he says, oh, it's bull crap, he'll just be like, oh, well, that's just stuff that Jeremy put out. You know, it's just like it gives him mm -hmm. like a, 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 a layer of, you know, what's called a cutout in intelligence terms is it is it's another layer that you can cut out of the uh, out and keep yourself free from the disinformation game that you're playing because i really feel like this is all disinformation i know this is all disinformation because it wouldn't be in the mainstream media all over you know getting the attention that it gets you know the, the real real information doesn't get that kind of attention or very very rare that it does if it does it leaks out and it was an accident and you don't it kind of disappears and you, it, it, it goes away after a while but this mainstream narrative that they're putting out most of these ufos videos that they're releasing and pushing out to the public i think they're all our technology and are examples of of, of our technology and it, none of it's the none of it's the the real stuff and um that it's 21 trillion dollars man i keep i keep bringing back to that because 21 yeah. trillion dollars is, is just missing it's unaccounted for okay that's enough to pay for almost uh, almost a thousand manhattan projects manhattan project was, manhattan project was done for like 21 billion dollars uh you know 2007 dollars it was like two billion is what it cost at the time so we're talking you know 21 billion versus 21 trillion dollars this is a thousand times as big as the manhattan project okay 21 trillion is going to buy you some tic tacs i'm sorry like I, if, yeah. if i had if i had if i had 21 trillion dollars for my labs and, and 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 you know what i know about the physics from studying this we could build these things i could have i could have I, I definitely could have if i had 20 years ago and yeah. started in, in in december in september 10th you know with donald rumsfeld the day before 9 11 saying that it was yeah. 2.3 trillion and then it just yeah more it, more trillions just kept missing going missing every every you know and now we're at 21 trillion ever since 20 years since 9 11. yeah you're damn right we could i could build a heck of a lot of cool stuff with with that much money oh yeah you know? that's why they took down building seven too third phase of moon is here third phase what's up man what's up guys what's up Welcome. guys Welcome to Goofon. I, I've got uh, alien science here, scientists here and uh, Dark Hour. Great to see you, Jeremy. What's hey, going? man. How's it going? Yeah, just listening to what I, J Jeremy's saying. And uh, yeah, I feel sorry for Jeremy because Jeremy's getting a bad name with this other Jeremy on board that didn't want to show up to this discussion here. <laughs> but 
that's all right. There's we a lot could, of good uh, Jeremy's in UFOlogy, man. There, it's just, there's, there's a lot one, of good Jeremy's. That's Jeremy. cool, man. There's always and, one bad one. <laughs> yeah, there's always one bad apple. But, there's you know, always, yeah. it's kind of crazy just uh, listening to this circle and how different it is from everywhere else where, where you go to try and find this information. And everybody's kind of uh, ignorant, basically, in this kind of discussion that we're having, except in this circle that we're all in. And nobody's asking the right questions. Just like you said, Jeremy, I, I believe you, $21 trillion, we could probably build at least, I'd say, 21 Tic Tacs. You know, these things are probably, probably pretty pricey, but you, you know that it, you, we could have this in our arsenal, our assets. It, it could be trickled down and I don't know. There's something out there that they're not touching upon. They, they don't even want to touch upon the subject that it could be in a private corporation. They admit, they keep saying that it's in a government corporation. That No, they say that it, it's not in our government corporation, but they really, really don't go down the rabbit hole of private corporations that if it could be in their assets. And to me, I think that's, that's where uh, people should be asking. Th these are the questions people should be asking because obviously there is something in advanced technology that obviously it's out there. We're still working with rockets. The technology that we drive around in cars is still a hundred years old. So, you know, we haven't flipped the page for some odd reason, even though the advancement of technology as we see around us builds AI is growing stronger. From what I'm hearing, AI has already set its place. They've already achieved their purpose. Now we're building them. They yeah. tricked us into building them in these uh, robots and the AI, and we're actually building artificial intelligence to advance AI. They've already tricked us, and uh, we're working for them in a weird way. It's a strange thought process, mm -hmm. but I think apparently that Skynet and that shift like we saw in Terminator actually did happen approximately, I don't know, about 10 years ago, something happened, and now we're building them. We're and who knows where all that goes. That's kind of a scary place. But I think this AI is gonna help in advancement of building these advanced technologies and the infrastructure behind it as well. We need AI to pilot these things because these things move so fast, human mind wouldn't be able to operate these kind of machines. So AI is gonna help us uh, build the infrastructure behind it and also operate it autonomously. So we don't have to have any humans, uh, you know, messing up or doing nefarious things with this technology. So AI is going to play, play the game. And I guess that was part of their plan as well, but we're going into a direction that I think it will be trickled down, but I don't know. It seems like all this technology comes after like some major event, a war or something. And that hasn't quite happened just yet. Right. Mm -hmm. Did anybody hear that there is going to be, because this was the prelim, you know, preliminary report that next Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, there's going to be the legitimate uh, release of these files. Did anybody there's else no, hear that but me? Maybe somebody no in the chat. Just really, they can get away with just that nine pages, man. That was like, it's, it's like, a, a, there's no way they can get away with that. Man. But that's what preliminary more. is. Right? Well, it's kind of like a... A, a sports event, a swimming event. They have their prelims. Yeah. They set it up, and the, the major event has it. The games haven't even begun. Prelims are just kind of exercises before the games start. Again, I'm, my main only interest in reading that is going to be about the technologies part, so I can point out what they didn't cover and what they, you know, they missed and stuff. Um, because you know, I don't know. I just feel like there there needs to be more investigations done there, and uh, I, I'm not waiting around or trusting my government to do those for me. That's why we we uh, we're putting together a lab and a team of scientists and engineers to, you know, take the what's already been declassified out of these programs that we have access to, um, and try to build whatever we can with it uh, based on the nut, what we do understand about the nuts and bolts of the physics so far. And uh, I think forced disclosure through technology is the is the path forward. I don't think um, you know any amount of FOIAs, like as we said, the FOIA process has pretty much hit a dead end because we know we now understand that this stuff is locked up inside of private corporations, where it's mm -hmm. unaccessible by FOIA, and also the process of just begging the government to just please disclose and tell the truth. It it, it, it just you know it's not going to work. So we're going to build it. That's build our way out of this that's where where i'm at right now and um 
So what's next? Yeah, what's next, man? We're gonna build. <laughs> I'm going down the lab uh, this weekend, and um, and we we already have some funding, and um, you know we we. Hey, Jeremy. Just experiment with the technology and and stuff, and do some videos. Yeah. Do you think you, could, you know, it's obviously nobody's ever done it before, but we it doesn't take much to prove that that technology that you're talking about could be produced and uh, actually made practical. What would be your first step? Like, would you be um, looking for a craft that somebody could uh, travel in? Are you going to start start small scale? Like, what kind of anti gravity properties that we would you'd want to replicate? Not saying that you got to ant do make anti gravity or defy physics. We we just want to emulate what we're seeing here: objects that could move right. thirty thousand mm -hmm. miles, move on and a dime. Exactly. So none of this defies physics. Um, yep. Good. It, Good. This we say is that if it's an observable phenomenon, there has to be you know an explanation for how to produce it. And so we're looking for ways that we can produce these sorts of things in our lab. And the one we're looking at really particularly right now is is the types of um, these spin metallic coatings and uh, what's called EPR NMR resonance, um, where we you know get. Um, you, you you find ways to resonate the lattice structure and all the spin states and get them um, you get them aligned in a coherent matter. So you get what's called quantum entanglement across an entire surface, and um, then we we're experimenting with how that um, that sort of quantum entanglement and these kind of quantum states affect gravity. Um, according to our models, we we believe that the graviton has already been discovered and that it's in this. It exists in, in um, our LIGO experiments and other experiments in the form of uh, squeezed quantum vacuum. And uh, it just, we think that if you, you know, basically you take two photons and you, you eliminate them, you get a graviton and that's where the, gravi the graviton will um, come out of. And now we're just looking for ways to, you know, we think that this is the, the point at which, you know, electricity couples with gravity. And so- So what are you gonna levitate first though? Like what object are you going to levitate you know and how are how small or large will the scale be when you first get started because we have people that are involved with uh, people that sit on the smithsonian on the head like physicists like heavy brains they're interested in this kind of stuff if you can we prove actually, we had a couple of guys from the university big investors Albany. too big investors they're just looking for any yeah. kind of proof so you let me know when you like that's what i'm asking what are you going to levitate first that, that's my question what we do you have your eye on this, this this weekend we're going to be doing the um alzaphon experiment with a couple of samples that we we've put together um including some materials which are like it, it's like a barium titanate which is a non-linear optical material and we're gonna try testing out this alzaphon experiment which was a 1981 um experiment that we found while doing some research into boeing um, Boeing Aerospace did this uh, study in, in 1981 and um, they were just trying to test out if nuclear dynamic orientation had could affect uh, the, the pull or the effects of gravity and uh, they according to what we learned that um, that they did they were successful and the results of that study were classified and um, kept classified for a number of decades until until his uh, son started publishing a lot of the stuff and that's how only how it came out years later is through his son David Alzafan who we've interviewed and, and talked to so again we're taking we're trying to break this all down and, and and really dig hard into the physics and you know if you know if Jeremy Corbell's got that element 115 man we'd certainly like to get our hands on some of that and, and test it out and we, we can put it in the hands of the right people and make disclosure happen um, just like we're trying to set up now, we have a whole bunch of people saying that, you know, they've got anti-gravity machines. So we, we bring them to our lab to test them and put them to the test and uh, see if any of them actually work. And also, you know, test, uh, test out these cutting edge theories on, you know, quantized inertia, the M drive, or, um, you know, any number of uh, things. We're also building a, a mock-up of the Mark McCandlish ARV um, and doing some, we, we've got some of, uh, you know, some other research. We and then we, we just appropriated another lab of a guy, another anti-gravity researcher, um, Chris 
Um, Hagelson, no, what's his name? Chris Hansen. What about a skateboard? You, you want to levitate a skateboard? That'd be pretty cool, man. We can make a hoverboard, man. We're going to get some make funding. That tell you That's what. it. That's where the funding <laughs> is at. You, you'll get all the money you need at that point. Jeremy, no problem. how much different is your experiment to the Hutchison effect? So um, the Hutchison effect is is a way to produce energy. And uh, there's a guy named Bob Greenier who's got a, a channel called Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. And he's doing the best Hutchison um, replication work uh, oh, of wow. anyone out there currently. Um, he's been in talks and and you know i've been in i've been in some of the private chats and communication with that group and it's really interesting learning what's going on um i hope to interview both of them at some point um to talk more about that but that's that's it's they're dealing with um localized you know energy pot pockets that hit these cells and create these um cavities which are called um exotic vacuum objects is what um bob greenier calls them and he's showing all kinds of evidence of them in his experiments, uh, transmutation of elements and fusion that are happening in these experiments. It's 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 quite interesting. It was uh, I was skeptical at first, but um, I see I'm seeing a lot more interesting stuff come out of those experiments. But it's it's uh, I don't I don't know all the extent of. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think it might have something to do with what, what Hutchison was doing, um, too. I don't I. I uh, although it sounds very similar with the the types of frequencies and the generators that he was using um, to hit these things with, let me. So I don't know. It seems quite interesting, but uh, I want to ask you this because I'm interested, and I don't know if other people thought of this question. What what does it cost to do an experiment like the one you're doing? Hmm. All the equipment that we have um to put everything together it's it's a lot of money for all the equipment we've, we've over we've 100k probably it's it's so well we just bought a machine a cnc machine for the for the lab to make stuff and it was like fifty five thousand for that yo machine. so it's like we also have a whole bunch of like power supplies and generators and stuff it's we're probably a well over 100k with all the like lab stuff that we've got built up so it's it's I'm just trying to, can, you know, we'll we'll That's bring all this stuff in one place. That way, we can Jeremy. do any experiment there. Yeah. Jeremy, hey man, That's peanuts comparatively to what these guys have in our, uh, you know, circle of friends. That's why I'm asking. They oh. got they got a lot of money, man. And all you got to do is prove one thing. Just mm. I don't know. You got to levitate something. It doesn't have to be even heavy. It just it's very very light. But you prove that. You've done something that nobody's ever done before. And that's all we need. And it sounds like you got the brain. And I, I don't know if you... Be, we're close, man. I think we're going to do it this year. Um, we just got to get... The, we we got a bunch of people coming down to yep. the lab this week. And I'm going to go down there um, with these guys. And um, I, I think we're, we're cracking the code. We're close to it. Hey, we have a friend. Um, his name's Alex. You mind if I actually pass over your information? You guys could jump on and just talk because he's into all this stuff and he really he dives in deep. So I think you guys would have a great conversation. It'd be a good clash yeah, of the minds for sure. Anyone that wants to get involved or send me information or or, or uh, be involved, uh, Jeff, definitely um, check me out at, at um, you can write email me at thealienscientist at gmail dot com if you want to email me. Uh, the alien scientist, that's one word, um, no spaces, all lowercase. And then um, you oh, guys can also check out my channel, Alien Scientist, on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be doing, we're going to be doing the APEC conference tomorrow, and uh, we'll probably be doing it live from the lab tomorrow. So you guys can check that out. We have a whole conference where we put a whole team of scientists together to, to try to reverse engineer and build this stuff. And um, yeah, tomorrow. that's really cool. That's yeah, really tomorrow cool. starts at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be doing that. And um, <sighs> I'll hopefully be building stuff in the lab, working in the lab the whole time in the background. So, well, yeah, let me man. ask you this, Jeremy, very quickly. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, we're going down the technological road. We're talking about the physics and so forth. We bring up, you know, element 115. If you were able to get this in your hand at some point into the lab, then possibly you'd come up with something conclusive in this actually being what it is. Do you think, though, if you were to find that and present it to the public at large, that there would be a group of people or a pushback of some sort that 
because they can't see it and feel it themselves. I mean, we're talking about a very small piece that, of course, is going to be experimented on and then coveted. Do you think that they'd still walk around and say this this isn't real, that there's actually uh, whatever the experiment conclusively showed? It's just it's not real still. I mean, and, and then again, the implication then comes from, well, if it's from off world, maybe it's from something natural like comet, debris. It, it doesn't necessarily tie in the extraterrestrial there, it, you know, just based on the fact that, you know, you've come up with this analysis. What are your thoughts on that, Nate? Well, I, I think that, you know, replication is a key in science because, you know, if you can show other people how to do this themselves, the element 115. It's going to, is kind of a hard one. And I point out the element 115 is is kind of like this, what I call an unobtainium, because you, it, it requires this one element that's, you know, it basically, according to Bob Lazar, it only it comes from uh, extraterrestrial star system. It came from a supernova and another, you know, it doesn't appear in our anywhere in our, you know, star system that he, it came from another star system is basically what he said. Um, so mm -hmm. it's this unobtainable, unobtainable thing. So that's going to be hard for other scientists to be like, well, how do I reproduce it if I don't, I'm missing this one key thing and I don't know what it is and how to make it, um, or it's unobtainable, right? Unobtainium is, 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 is a word that, that what's is, your, what's your thoughts you know, on, but is, is, is to answer your question. Let me answer your question uh, before I, before, uh, I get distracted. I, I get distracted very easily and I tend to <laughs> ramble. So, um, the uh the other thing we can have an experiment where like like for example um tom DeLong had that piece of um that material with the bi-layered bi material with uh magnesium and bismuth in the layers um and he said that when you hit it with terahertz it floated right that's what he claimed on joe rogan and so you know if we can get something like that where we can actually you know show people how to produce that show people the layering structure how to make that metal and then you know have a video where we, we we produce the metal and show people how to make it and then show people how to do the experiment you know for say that this can, my goal is to make an experiment that can be done for under 500 bucks that way anyone can go and do this you know like it's it's cheap it's accessible that's what, what kind of what we want to we want to develop is something that can be replicated by everyone for for a very cheap price that's that's what we want to see because if that's going to beat out the element 115 that's going to beat out all these things is, is showing people something that they can go out and build and that, then it's like you can't deny it because everyone will be doing it at that point once we show that once we release that video and show how to do it so excellent wild I'm just sitting back listening. <laughs> Here, uh, yeah. Coach Rulzen says Element 115 has a short half life, but it can have different isotopes with the right isotope. It's supposedly stable, doesn't decay in seconds like the currently isotope we can create right now. Yes. Yep. Well, we've never dis we've discovered four um, isotopes um, on the books of Moscovium or Element 115, and none of them have a half life more than a, a couple hundred milliseconds. So. Um, yeah, I, I still, you know, I, I hold hopeful that we'll find one that is stable and, and have all these magical properties that Bob Lazar described. And uh, and I'm sure I can get a, um, you know, get some protoducting perovskite so we can get a positron source for uh, that end of the experiment. And we can go hit it with some positrons and see if it does what uh, Bob Lazar said it did in, in his, you know, explanation of the reactor. Um, now, let me ask you this, uh, Jeremy, because, man, since we got you on the show over here at Goofon, man, it's kind of cool. But, you know, there's this uh, term that was brought up in Countdown to Disclosure. Uh, do you think that there is um, in, in the possession of a secret, you know, private corporation, a private corporation that that, that they've mastered uh, super cavitation? And can you explain what, what exactly that is? Yes. So, um the super cavitation effect is when you put in so much energy into a certain area, like the pistol shrimp, for example, that, that it flicks its its uh, claw so fast that it produces a uh, an implosion at a certain point at a point in in the water, and it actually creates this cavit super cavitated bubble, um, which is basically it's like quantum entanglement and. I think there's quantum entanglement involved in it. There's all kinds of weird stuff that happens with super cavitation and, and super ca like cavitation happens on torpedo on um, on the blades of like ships and stuff, and it eats away at the uh, the metal and stuff. So, but there's also the type of super cavitation. It goes back to this um, 
this guy Lake Marabou, who's a NASA scientist, um, L E I K M Y R A B O, and he was developing this light craft for Project Sky Vault, where they were basically, you know, using lasers and and, and using laser energy to to、um, explode air to, to to create these, you know, to create like、um, a shock wave that you could ride、uh, aircraft on. And they were even doing it on planes to take control of airplane wings and stuff like that. Um, by by cavitating the air across the surface of the airplane wing, they could get the air, the the one wing to lift up more than the other, and they could get, take control of airplanes and stuff using this tech, which is which is super cool.、Um, but apparently, if they, they blast enough of this energy in front of the craft, they can it create a super cavitating effect, which moves all the air out of the, or water out of the way, so they can have these trans medium vehicles that can go in and out of the water and in and out of the air because they use.、Uh, Basically, a high-powered laser, which heats up and blasts the air in front of it, like it heats it up so rapidly and so fast that it super cavitates. So it creates this like tunnel in front of the craft、um, for it to go through, so that y- you can travel right through water or air at at supersonic speeds without getting the.、Um... You know, when we put the information out on countdown to disclosure, it came from a source, and when they mentioned. Super cavitation. A lot of people ripped into this guy and said, "Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He he has no idea. This guy's a liar." I don't even want to mention the guy's name at,、mm. at this moment. But does somebody make up this kind of terminology, or it, does it make sense? I've, I've, it was the first time I've actually heard of it when、uh, this guy、It's、mentioned it. Interesting. Can't find、Go、any、ahead. videos of like. We have super cavitating torpedoes, and the,、uh, you can only find one video of them from、uh, South Korea doing a test of them. And、um, I don't know; it's super interesting that, that they have this technology. It's not well known about or well talked about, and、um, you know, wouldn't be wouldn't surprise me if you get some G men or agents showing up on your channel to tell you that this stuff wasn't real or that it didn't exist, and make fun of anyone talking about it because it is、yeah. real. It What does- about? What about this other term that was coined by our good friend Alex Gershowitz? He he sits on the panel time to time and a retired physicist. And we're like saying, okay, because he he really is against this anti gravity term because he believes that、yeah. there's in gravity. You know, we're all falling at the same time, so you know we're just going around with the curve of the sun and around it, and it keeps us. It's not really gravity itself; it's just inertia, but. So he, we get in these arguments. So I'm like, okay, he doesn't like the term UFO. Obviously, it's too vague, and he really hates the UAP terminology. Again, it's really、mm-hmm. vague.、So、I'm like, what, what do we call this thing? Especially if you're going to build it. And he came up with this term, and we shared it on Third Phase Moon for the first time. And it's called a meta propulsion vehicle, a MPV, meta propulsion vehicle. Is that something you wanting to、uh, design? Because it's basically all about the meta, right? We don't know what is propelling these things. It's and m- maybe you're going to develop the meta, and then we're going to realize what the meta is, and then we're going to have to change that term. But right now,、mm-hmm. you're trying to develop a meta propulsion craft, right? Something that's the well, goal. Plus, the idea is is that these lasers, you know, it, well, they figured out they can do these with do do with these lasers, uh, uh, these directed energy weapons. They can cause super cavitation of the air in front of the craft. But、um, they can also build up、uh, an entangled charge. I, I think like you build up these entangled states of, of trapped light, and then you squeeze them with using squeeze states to、uh, manipulate the what are called the you know the gravitons or the shot noise.、Um, it's kind of like we, that's the in our model. It,、uh, this there's a bunch of physics on this going back to Bernard Hache,、um, uh, uh, who worked at Caltech and, and did some research for Lockheed Martin, and he also wrote a bunch of papers with Hal Putoff back in the '90s and 2000s and stuff, all about this the, this whole idea of, of changing inertia, basically inertial con- confinement and cancellation, and under re- reinterpreting、um, inertia so that you could just just basically like change your inertia and reinterpret it, what it, the way it. You're, you you interact with the vacuum, so they they have all this stuff about inertia as a, as a quantum、um, a vacuum reaction or a, a re- reaction to the quantum zero point energy field. And、um, if you you can do this with a bunch of trapped light and、uh, these squeeze inertia dampeners kind of thing.、So、that meta that whole meta idea comes in from like what are called meta atoms, 
um, so the idea is if, if you get these spin states, like uh, we, were, we were talking about with this, this whole idea of spintronics, you get all these spin states and you get them all to align and cohere, you can get the entire craft to like essentially behave like a single atom or a meta, what's called a meta atom. And then when you can get it to behave like a meta atom or a single atom, you can basically squeeze it. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is violated. So it jumps from position to position. It jump, it will jump around quantum mechanically and you can literally the craft using a, a form of quantum gravity i don't know I'm, I'm probably not describing it perfectly but I, i'm i'm working with a bunch of, of physicists who could probably describe it a lot better than me so if you have um if you have some scientists that really want to get into the nuts and bolts of how this stuff works then um, have them send me an email and i can put them in touch with some of the people on our team because yeah i'm i'm pretty absolutely. good but man we got on this on this stuff so but if you guys were to actually come up with this and you, you create something in the way of meta propulsion or you know what you're describing as anti-gravity technology, something that you know we don't see in the public eye, do you have any concern of that being taken away from you or you know some kind of funding being pulled? Do you, do you have to keep eyes on your back as well? Yes. So um, we have backups and backup groups because what, ha what tends to happen to these things in the real world, right? So we, we have uh, a company like a a company like Battelle that manages all the national laboratories, right? So anytime that one of our national laboratories, which is where all like the big scientific research and development takes place, that's who has the money and the equipment to do these types of experiments and are probably working on this stuff. So say that they were to invent something. What would then happen is that um, a company called National Security LLCs, like Lawrence Livermore La LLC, would come in and basically take those patents and, you know, They'd file a patent on that idea and then that patent would get shelved and, and moved into a class, a, a separate, um, it wouldn't go to the U.S. Patent Office and be, be located in the public patent directory. It will go to a, 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 it will go to a secure place, which is for um, national security patents, patents which uh, could violate national security because that's the excuse they use to hide all their criminal and illegal activity and, and hide all the could save our, our planet and and help humanity instead of you know enslave anything that can break the enslavement that these puppet masters have over us they're going to um, shelve and and keep away from the public and that's been you know the allegation since you know as long as we can remember but this is the reality of how this operates and they use something called um itar um i-t-a-r or e-a-r it's called an export control law um, to prevent that technology from ever getting out or those patents from ever reaching the public. And, and they use real laws where they'll, they'll try you with uh, trading with the enemy and, um, you know, trading foreign technology assets to the enemy if you try to release or leak that stuff. So we're well aware of those types of things. And, and um, we argue that those are illegal and uh, inhumane, unethical, and, um, you know, just, just wrong. And we have you know, systems in place to make sure that information gets out to the public in a way it, it, we're not going to try to patent it or keep it proprietary. There will, there'll be no NDAs, uh, non-disclosure agreements signed anywhere with anyone in our group. Um, all the public, you know, it's, it's basically, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to crack this code and then we're trying to make it public and, and, and get it out to the public. So we, we've already thought about this and, and investigated this so that when this happens, it will be disclosure and, and there's nothing they can fucking do about it <laughs> i like that <laughs> very well said yeah go get him. i remember we we're talking to jeremy a couple months ago just uh, on the phone and we we're having some good conversations and you brought up this company uh battelle and that was pretty much the first time i ever heard of that company and we did a little research but i know you could tell it a lot better give us a little uh insight about this company battelle yeah, Battelle. I think they've existed since 1938. I believe 38. They were they were um, they've been around, and they were one of the top um, metallurgist contractors. So they they built tank armor and and experimented with different types of metal alloys for air. You know what you know. But um, right around you know 1947, um, there's some evidence that they were involved with a, a another project, Blue Book. Like so that there was an, uh, the regular Project Blue Book, which the Air Force had and, and released to the public. But there was another version which was, you know, basically kept to this um, to a more refined group of, of scientists, including the head of Battelle at the time, a guy named Howard C. Cross. And um, 
lots of interesting stuff that we, we you know, you go back to um, Battelle, right? 1947 Roswell crash. Apparently that material went to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. And then just after that, Battelle got all these contracts to, to begin researching titanium alloys, titanium purification. And, um, and they also got a, a, a variety of contracts right after that, you know, right after that time period. So Battelle would have been the contractor if you had alien metals that would have had to go somewhere and get analyzed. Battelle would have been one of those contractors to do it. Um, several employees that worked for Battelle, um, one of them most famous is a guy named John Elroy Center. And uh, John, John Elroy Center, um, I think that's his name, Center. Uh, John Elroy Center said that he was given, um, well, he was tasked at Battelle, he was given this materials. Can you spell that? Uh, Jeremy, everybody's saying Mattel. Uh, let's spell it for him because. B A T T E L L E. And it's Battelle Memorial Institute. And it's in, um, they're, they're in Columbus, Ohio, is where their headquarters is. But they have um, other facilities and buildings all over the U.S. They're in, like an international company and stuff. They're a private contractor. It's actually a private institute, so it's it's untouchable by FOIA. But they have you know numerous contracts with the government going back decades, including to the Wright Patterson Material Command right after Roswell, which is you know oddly and su suspicious in in itself. Um, but there are people that work for Battelle Metallurgists who said that they were given pieces of stuff that they they thought were alien spacecraft because they had never seen anything like it before and have never seen anything like it again. Um, again, the, the, these memory metals, uh, the, these and these uh, foils that could be bent and crinkled and folded in half, and it would and would re retain their shape upon. Um, Bingo. You know. So really interesting stuff um, has been reported. You know, no one's ever gotten their hands on any of that material. Um, it's you know a lot of the scientific community is like, oh, that's just rumors and conspiracy theories and, and nonsense, but. So apparently it's in a blue a place called the Blue Room at Wright Patterson. Um, senator, um, who's the guy, the senator that Barry Goldwater. So Barry Goldwater tried going after that Blue Room um, years ago and, and was denied access. And um, but there's definitely um, hold on, I gotta stop it. I gotta stop this. Men in Black's coming right up to our doors, guys. You, the information we're getting in here is too hot. Check your back <laughs> doors over there, Michael Goofon. Men in Black outside your windows. This is crazy stuff Hold here, on. man. <laughs> Love ah! this stuff. <laughs> this is get the balls ready. <laughs> so far, this so is good. too hot to handle right here. Go ahead. Yeah, apparently there's a blue room at Wright Patterson Material Command uh, where all the alien artifacts go. Anything that's unidentified or that they don't know what it is, it get it gets put there. And um, apparently there's a whole uh, hangar or, or a room underground at Wright Patterson full of this stuff is what I've heard. Um, and that Battelle is one of the few contractors that has access from time to time to go and look at that stuff. Interesting. Battelle recently got the contracts to develop these hypersonic uh, smart skin coatings. So the skin coatings that I was talking about, th they gave the contract to Battelle. So, uh, why not? I mean, they've only got, you know, 70 years of looking at this stuff and trying to figure out what it is. So I'm sure if anyone knows how to build it, it's them. So that's where everything is then. Or no, it's split up into probably 10 different places around the globe, right? I think a lot of it went to, you know, these other contractors too, like, because there's, there's people that need to manufacture the stuff. There's, it, there's a bunch of different contractors and stuff. And a lot of it's in small private corporations that nobody knows that they even do this this kind of work. Um, that's that's the way it's it's been done for a while now. EG&G was a big contractor that did all the stuff at Area 51. Um, so they, they probably have some stuff too that they've done. Lockheed Martin as well. Um, they were definitely one of the, one of the tops, but man, that 21 trillion, you think you start thinking about that and, and um, you start thinking about this technology and digging into the physics and how far it might, it could go back. Um, they could, I, I, I really think that they're, they have this stuff and, and that they're trying to reverse engineer it right now and, and, and uh, build it. And it's a race going on between, you know, to against Russia and China to see who can get it first. You know, we're talking to David Adair, and he was saying 
that he thinks that we're probably about a thousand years in advanced technology that's being hidden due to the rate of the technology that we've been playing around with over the past uh you know 30 40 years that's you know i laugh i laugh when these people the news reporters say oh this technology that's flying out the round out there that's a thousand years more advanced than anything we have in our arsenals i was like yep that's about right <laughs> crazy and people roll their eyes when i bring up david adair and i don't understand this guy's has been in the thick of this from uh the beginning aerospace uh, you know I, a lot uh, of patents. Guys i want to talk to david like i would love to interview david adair and, and pick his brain and, and get and get him on to uh, that would that would be a great conversation man I, I i know someone that knows him and i've been trying to arrange that but um it hasn't we got an uh, incredible interview with him coming up on uh countdown to disclosure the sequel it's mind-blowing and uh he says some things that are incredible and he explained a lot about area 51 as well when he visited the area in really nice detail we'll be putting that up on third phase of moon here real soon but yeah, uh, we'll hook you up with uh, David or Dare. That's not a problem. You know, the guy's got so much information. You guys could, he probably could help in uh, the development of all this because his brain is still, he's very sharp and he's been dealing with this kind of technology and he's hes not a happy camper either. And he says, we're not dealing with any Boy Scouts out there as well. Just a little sneak peek in his language. But yeah, David Adair is amazing, and but it's amazing you bring him up in the UFO community or these supposed uh, experts or what have you. They roll their eyes when you bring up Adair, which is interesting to me. It doesn't to me? It seems like Jeremy understands and appreciates. Not Jeremy from oh, Alien Scientist, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah not Jeremy Corbell, <laughs> Alien Scientist. Yeah, it's not confuse these two by any means. There's a big difference. If you anyway. know, like. I see a comment in this, uh, this guy, sorry, David Adair is full of poo. And, you know, uh, we'll be able to tell that within, you know, a very short time if he, if he is, if he does get on with us, because, you know, deep, deep knowledge is not something you can really fake. If you have degrees and you have, you know, a deep understanding of, of physics and stuff, I can, there's certain things you just should know. And if you don't, then it's a, it's a clear indication. My audience will pick that out and, and, the team I have will 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 be if he's if if Adair isn't who he says he is, we'll be able to pick it up, pick him off right off the bat. So absolutely, uh, and that, that's the language we hear as well. And uh, I guess we'll find out about that. And that language, what you just stated, you'll be able to find out pretty much immediately whether uh, he says who he is or uh, claims that he has a knowledge in this. Absolutely. We talk to a lot of people that really do have the knowledge and 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 have put together on you know briefings for the APEC conference, you know, hour long briefings on stuff, you know, guys from British Aerospace, guys from Boeing. We've had them, you know, disclose and come forward with, you know, the, the programs that they worked on, you know, doing anti gravity research for these major aerospace companies. So we have plenty of legit people, you know, already, and um, we invite anyone who is legit to, you know, come forward. And, you know, if, if they are legit, then they'll pass the test. And, and you know, it'll, you know, Mark McCandlish was one of the first guys that came on. You know, we, we put him to the we put him to the test. We hit him with more technical questions in that interview than he'd ever been asked. in you know, the 20 years before that. And then, you know, a couple months later, he's dead. <laughs> which is crazy, but I don't think, I, I still don't believe the conspiracy side of that because we did a lot of investigation into that, de into his death, um, you know, because a lot of people were saying, oh, he got suicided and stuff, but it doesn't didn't look like that from the facts that we, we uh, were able to put together. Um, but again, the truth, the truth is, uh, the truth's out there, man, and it's just, it just takes. Uh... That's up to us. That's for sure. All of us. Mm hmm but what do we know what the truth is? How are we supposed to know? Well, That's the more the these part. layers that we're taking off here as we go on, we find the consistencies, we find the science behind it, we see how some of these things start to match up. I mean, something as simple as, you know, some of these religious beliefs or esoteric models of spirituality are, are now finding their way into science in the way of quantifying some of these uh, phenomena, if you will. So. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where we go with things, but I think that's how we're getting some of the more solid convictions that we have going forward. Again, it's just peeling off those layers through time and just taking in everything that we can that's on the table, that's at our disposal to look at and uh, excuse me, analyze or otherwise. 
Well, guys, this was a great panel, and thank you guys for including me, man. I really got to get packing because I'm going to get going to New Jersey first thing in the morning to go down to no. the lab. So, um, yeah, thank awesome. you, man. Appreciate yeah, this. Thank you. Very go nice get it, surprise. LA thank you. I yes, know absolutely. Man. Appreciate it. Keep up, the, keep up the good fight, man. We're uh, watching closely, and uh, we're waiting That's to funny. see what happens next. Really good. Yeah, this sure. new term is uh, Jeremy's. Like it's, I'm telling some people on the field, like you're a true UFO patriot. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we all feel that way. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Jeremy. You, Jeremy. Awesome, guys. Be safe. All right, keep up the great work. And if Corbell comes, I'm definitely let me know because I'll come back. No, I will. <laughs> he will. He won't. He won't. He saw me here. He's already running for the hills. He's hiding in a. He's probably hiding in a. Uh, T uh, a tent fort in his living room that he built in a safe space. And it's pyramid shaped. It's pyramid shaped. Too. <laughs> uh, All right, guys. Thanks again, man. Awesome. Always a pleasure. Stuff. Later. Take care. Bye bye. That was a nice surprise, man. And, you know, we are rolling up to the end of the show. So everybody know hey, hey uh, Cousins Brothers, uh, anything going on tonight? A video? Oh, yeah, we're going to be covering it all. You know, the big nothing burger report the, the, so far, what we've got, you know, again, <laughs> it's just the beginning. Maybe we'll get some more stuff. Apparently, there's some language out there that, again, this is just the beginning of a bigger show of what we might be expecting leading down other avenues. So it's kind of a good thing, but we're going to be covering kind of what what transpired today. You know, Richard Dolan chimed in on uh, Alien Scientist, which is pretty cool. Oh, on, uh, excuse me, Alien Addict show. Right. And uh, then we had Greer on there as well, which is kind of cool. And then, I, you know what? In my opinion, I think that was Corbell that showed up. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. People are watching. And then there's kind of walls that have been uh, torn down a little bit. I guess the wall's been built up a little bit that Corbell didn't show up. But at least Dolan kind of came in there. And, yeah, uh, that was cool. That was cool. Oh. And, and then about this Jesus guy. UFO the, Jesus post disclosure yeah, world was there. Post disclosure. He's backing up Rich after all the time Rich has been, you know, going after, you know, this guy. And then he kind of comes around, maybe seeing the light here. Maybe some ascension has happened. And that's kind of cool. So it was a cool day today. In it was a wild day. It, it was, was real way wild. better than it's, I thought it was going to be. I didn't it expect did. waking up that this day would be like this. Like this is what happened today. So that was really not what we expected. We didn't expect anything from the from the drop, obviously, but we didn't expect how you know everybody chimed in on this obscure channel known as Alien Addict, and then we're all there, and people just kind of it just happened there, a natural progression, which is yeah. kind of like magic. There's a little bit of magic done, and it's just uh, again that the world that we're living in and. We're all living it together. It's super cool, man. Good to be with you guys. Yeah, it yeah, seems like you too. it's just there's these uh kind of these the line drawn in the sand, and we've created this this <laughs> line. And we got our friends, Dark Hour Goof on and many others, and they're saying the same thing, and and they're they're kind of like it's a our narrative that needs to be said and put to the forefront. And these guys are now coming on these kind of platforms. We're, we're always willing and open to talk to anybody. And uh, yeah, it was interesting to see all these other players come into this chat room, but Corbell not uh, doing what he said at the end was pretty pretty disappointing uh, when it's all said and done. It was just kind of the Corbell shit show today. And mm. we'll see. Um, the best thing about it is that we have our friends and that's what it's all about. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you. Thank sir, you. Thank yeah, I appreciate you, it. And yeah. Michael, thank you too. Uh, you got anything going on later on tomorrow? What's going on uh, with you in your in your channel? So I'm, I'm working on a few things here uh, for Third Phase UFO Report, uh, as well as my channel on the way of premieres. I am going up to see Alex Oyen on Tuesday. We were scheduled from last week to this week nice. coming, but that's that's definitely on. I'm going to go up oh, there, spend good. some time with him. Uh, he's going to give me his perspective on what has been happening. He has uh, an officer friend who will not only corroborate his stories, but also share some of his own. So that'll be interesting. And of course, that'll be put together in the way of you know the premieres that you see us doing here. Uh, and in respect to interviews, keep your eyes out. I know I'll have at least one or two next week. Uh, if anybody's interested in talking to me on that level, please uh, reach out to me, darkhourparanormallive at gmail.com. 
uh, I'll definitely get back to you and we'll go down that road. But thank you very much, Gufan, for everything you do. Third phase of Moon, for everything you do. This is not just a, you know somebody on the corner patting each other on the back. You guys really do put the heart and your heads out on the line to get this done and switch the narrative from something fearful to something more congruent and more reflective of the collective in where we're headed. It's a wild day, everybody. We appreciate you guys joining us on this live uh, premiere. It's been pretty cool. Uh, it's a big day. We're going to find out what happens with these reports. Uh, again, it's kind of like a sporting event. These are the prelim trials, and it's going to go into a different uh, aspect of this information coming in. So uh, we're here. We're always going to be here, and we're taking all the public's evidence, and we're sharing it as fast as possible. That's what we're here for, and we're going to continue to do it. Appreciate you guys in the chat tonight. All the super chats really help the cause. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. Be safe. We'll see you real soon.